Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is one of those creative types that is going to help us supercharge our marketing. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host. You know him, you love him, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm ready to supercharge my marketing. You know what they say, Scott Todd? What do they say? Video killed the radio star. So our <laughs> guest today is one of those killers. Josh Kohler has been in the real estate investing industry since 2013 and has been a part of hundreds of deals as a marketing director. He's the owner of Kohler Media and REI.video and he focuses his services on active real estate investors and real estate influencers providing content marketing. So Josh Kohler, welcome. How are you? Mark, Scott, thanks for having me on the show. I'm doing fantastic. It's, uh, it's good to be on here. Uh, honored to be on the show. Hopefully I can provide some value. Well, let's, let's just get right into it. We're gonna skip the pleasantries. Let's do it. Josh, and let's, let's just it. rewind the tape. And when did you wake up and think to yourself, you know what, real estate investors, I can help those poor marketers. Yeah, so I think there's a, you know, without having to go into a long story, there was a chain of events that kind of happened that led me into the real estate investing industry. And it was really just, uh, you know, I was 19 years old, I was working in a warehouse and uh, a friend of mine that I played basketball and baseball with in high school, his dad owned about, um, and still does own about 500 doors in our area, which is Northwest Indiana, Chicagoland region. And so like he, uh, you know, I gave him a call. I was fed up with my forklift job in Chicago and I gave him a call and said, Hey, do you guys have any place for somebody that's kind of a little bit of a creative and willing to learn whatever you guys got going on? And they brought me on and I was 19 years old, <laughs> newly introduced to real estate. It was just a job to me at that point. They had me doing um, just about anything in marketing from sending direct mail to Craigslist postings back when Craigslist was hot. Um, that was back when the market was more um, dispositions marketing as opposed to acquisitions marketing um, because HUD was hot, MLS was hot, auction.com was hot. Like you could snap your fingers and get a deal. And so we were, you know, doing cold calling. We were doing acquisitions marketing, dispositions marketing, just about anything you think of. I was going out and putting bandit signs in, in yards and on street corners and everything. Um, and that's kind of my segue into how I got into real estate. And then from there, I was with them for about six, seven months. Um, transitioned and moved into um, another company that was actually a competitor the, to them because um, there was just some things that weren't going right with them. And I wanted a, 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 another way to grow. And a buddy of mine who, uh, his name's Gary Harper, does uh, EOS implementation and business systems and processes for real estate investors. He was partners with a couple other people that were um, had this monster wholesaling company. And so he brought me on and, and really took me under his wing and mentored me. And I became their marketing director. First, we started off uh, virtually wholesaling in Michigan, in the state of Michigan. And the first year I was with him, we did 40 deals um, without seeing a single one of them, both in the process. Like he and I realized we don't like real estate. We like what it can provide, but we don't right. actually like walking into a house and getting fleas all over our legs and that kind of thing. So we hired a field, a field person to actually go pre-look the properties, put bandit signs out and you know, meet with sellers and that kind of thing. And so that's kind of like how I elevated into that. And then over the past six, seven years, I've really gone into more specifically the marketing side of things. And then in the past two years, I've gone specifically into content marketing uh, for real estate investors, whether they're active investors or uh, the influencers uh, such as yourselves. But that's, that's kind of how it, it happened. And there's a lot in between that, but that's the, that's the, the baseline story. <laughs> wow, Scott Tyler, your thoughts? You know, it's, it's funny because um, we, we all have like this little niche that we fall into, right? And, and Mark, we see this even in land investing, right? Some people are good at deal deal acquisition, deal uh, selling. Uh, some people are good at marketing. And I think it's really kind of cool to kind of pull out your strengths and do your strengths as opposed to just kind of chasing what someone else is telling you you should be doing. It's kind of Josh's story right there. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. So Josh, that leads me to my next question because you've done so much marketing for so many different real estate investors and influencers, everything going on with real estate. We all know if we look at, let's just traditional real estate, 
it's a very visual medium. Mm -hmm. But I can imagine that when you first start working with a client, what would you say is the, the biggest marketing mistakes you see them making and that you have to go and fix? If we're talking, um, so I would say like the biggest thing is as an entrepreneur in general, not just a real estate investor, it's our tendency. And a lot of times it's the right way to do it. Uh, most people start this way, but they start into marketing, doing things on their own and trying to learn things on their own. Um, mm -hmm. Anything from putting video content out to building their own websites, um, running their own Facebook ads. Like it's, it, they, they, it's called bootstrapping is essentially what it is. And we, right. it's not just marketing. Like we try to do things on our own in everything, like in your in real estate, like you try to do your own closings, you try to do your own pre looks of the properties and the deals that you got going on. And that's a lot of times where you have to start. But the a big pitfall that I see a lot of people fall into is they never um, delegate those things to somebody that knows what they're doing and they're not willing to you know, pay up for that. Um, and essentially that's like the biggest thing in marketing is there's just so many, like marketing is literally a quarterly basis thing. I was actually just doing an interview with one of the top marketers in the country and he's, uh, he works very heavily with real estate investors. And um, he was telling me, you know, like every quarter is like dog years when it comes to like <laughs> marketing, because it, it like, it evolves so quickly and especially over the course of the past 10 to 20 years, it's just evolved so rapidly. Um, even if you just dial it down to like just Facebook alone or just web development or just whatever it is you're doing, cold calling, texting, like things change all the time. And for a real estate investor to keep up with that themselves and have the duties of keeping up with their business, it's, it's a big challenge. And a lot of times it just doesn't work out. And then they end up throwing a lot of money down the, down the toilet and then you get this, these responses of, well, Facebook ads don't work. Um, you know, I tried it for three months and it just didn't yield any results. I didn't get any return on my ad spend um, or, you know, websites don't work. My audience doesn't go to websites and like, and a lot of times they're wrong because they didn't know how to market in the first place, but then take those marketing efforts, analyze the data, make adjustments to that data, and then like execute from there. And that's a big pitfall that I see. So what I would suggest and not upselling at all. Cause you know, I'm in, the, it's hard for me to say st things like this because I'm a marketer myself, but right. leave it. Like if you have the ability to connect with somebody that knows what they're doing, then you need to do that. And you need to be willing to, uh, cause ultimately the amount of money that you would throw down the toilet doing yourself, you might as well hand it over to somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, and I don't run ads. I don't, I run, I do all this stuff for my business because I know what I'm doing, but I don't run ads for other people. I don't build websites for other people but it's important and imperative if you are going to do marketing the right way. And in such a saturated industry right now, if you're going to stand above people, you need to have people that know what they're doing to do those things. No, absolutely. I mean, in the long run, when you hire experts, because you know what you know, you know what you don't know, but you don't know what you don't know. Right. It's always a massive ROI on it. But, you know, initially we're all hesitant to do it. Yeah. And the question I would ask too, Mark, is would you, and this is a question that I get asked on a consistent basis and most entrepreneurs should get asked or at least ask themselves is, would you rather be a jack of all trades and a master of none or vice versa? Right? So if you're a master, say you're a master at talking to sellers, like be a master and just become even better at that and then build other masters in specific areas of your business around you and you're just going to have this incredible company. But what a lot of people try to do is just be a jack of all trades. They try to, again, bootstrap and do everything themselves. And that's where they experience no growth. They experience, you know, times like this with COVID and, and impacting their business. And then they're not getting deals because they're trying to do everything themselves and are delegating it to people that um, know what they're doing. So, yeah. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? You know, it's funny, Mark, because how many times do we hear someone say like, uh, oh, well, I'm not doing this because I'm building a website or, you know, like, I, I mean, I love, I love this example because someone, was, someone once told me like, oh man, I've spent 50 hours building my website. And I'm like, oh, are you a web designer? <laughs> no, I don't know anything about it. And I'm like, then you just wasted yeah. 50 hours of your life because yep. you're doing something that you're no good at. And I yes. don't mean that like people like to, to get creative. Right. But like, like you said, like how many times do people like, 
you you give up the stuff that you're good at to do the stuff that you're not good at because you don't want to write a check and i get it like writing a check is no fun but you know what when you're starting a business you should be prepared to write some checks because it's an investment yes. that you will get back but like that's that's the deal is don't don't find yourself stuck in a trap doing things that you're no good at just absolutely. go do it absolutely that i yeah i couldn't have said it better yeah, no, it, it, it's true. So let's get into like the fundamentals for you of when you want to help a marketer. Let's just say somebody that is a house flipper and they come to you and they say, Josh, um, I'm selling two houses a month. I want to sell 10. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? What would be the fundamentals that you would see that they would need to go to that next level in their marketing? Sure. So to be clear where I specialize in is the content marketing side of things. Like I can, I can run somebody's marketing if the price is right, but that's not my core business sure. model as being a marketing director for somebody, even though I've been in that seat, it's not like what we're specifically niched in, in saying that as well, I would suggest there, there's a, there's a few things is again, first of all, like line up the right people, you know, understand who your target demographic is, get that nailed down. If, and if you're a business owner, you already should know this, this is a marketing one-on-one. Um, even if you're not doing the marketing for your business, you still need to know who your target demographic is and you should know them better than sometimes even better than they know themselves. Um, and that's like, that's when you truly will be able to grasp onto and understand how to market to your target demographic correctly. Um, so, so say for instance, you're a house flipper. Um, there's, there's really two, there's two directions that you have to go with your marketing is number one, you got to get deals. So that's acquisitions. Right. And then number two is after you flip the house, then you got to dispo the house or whether you're going to keep it, you still got to put a tenant in the house and market for that tenant. Uh, most of the time, fix and flippers are going to be selling retail though, uh, or at least turnkey at minimum. But the thing that you got to understand is that those two directions that you're going, those are two totally different target demographics because the person you're acquiring the house from more than likely, if, if it's an off market deal, more than likely they're going through a pain point, right? They, they right. inherited the house or they um, are going through pre foreclosure. They're, you know, this, that, and the other, they, they, they have too many repairs that need to be done in the house. They don't want to mess with it. They just want to get out from underneath it. A whole slew of things, right? So that's your target demographic you're going after. The second target demographic on the dispo side, these are people that want to essentially buy a new house because you've retailed it. You've flipped the house. You've you know, done whatever you, that needed to be done to the house and you are marketing to a homeowner, which is somebody that is more than likely not going to pay cash for the house. They're going to be financing it. This is just a totally different demographic you're dealing with. So number one is knowing those two audiences is important. Number two is knowing how to market to them, which is again, why knowing your audience is so imperative because if you don't know how to market to them, you're not going to reach them. Um, again, the, the podcast I was on previously, um, the, the guy I was hosting on my show, he mentioned something very intriguing to me is, and this is really like, not just every type of marketing, it's more interruption marketing, which mm -hmm. interruption marketing is ads, it's TV commercials, radio ads, it's basically when a customer or a potential lead prospect is on a platform, whether it is they're listening to the radio or they're scrolling through Facebook they're consuming content in some way, shape or form. And you're jumping in, interrupting that content, not asking them if you want to consume my ad and you're saying, here's my ad. And then you pitch it to them. Here's right. the thing about that is that you're having, it's a one way conversation. They're not conversing back to you. You're talking to them and that's it. And you have like four seconds, even probably less than that to actually capture their attention and more times than not that like people just don't build out that the right way. So again, knowing your target demographic, you're going to use that to connect with them within that first four seconds. So th like those two things who knowing your target demographic and knowing how to market to them, which is also included on where to market to them, because your target demographic may not be listening to radio ads. They may not be on Facebook. They may not be searching you on websites um, or Google my business, whatever, however you market. It's not the same across the board, but knowing those two things, we'll be able to tell you how to communicate with them in those ads and then also how to market to them. So those are, those are like intangible things that I know you asked me for like how to market to them, but that's like, those are the two things that everybody misses. That's not doing it right. It's because they don't know their target demographic well enough 
and they don't know how to market to them well enough. And that's the thing that people miss the most. Anytime I'm working with an investor, that's what, that's the most common pitfall I see um, with, with people. And again, even if you're not doing your own marketing, you got to, whoever the agency that you hire, they need to know that target demographic as well um, because it's not the same across the board. So. so let's just pick on Scott Todd and Scott's, you know, new to all this and he wants to know whom is my target demographic for, you know, this, this new, you know, business I'm launching called investor ninjas. Mm-hmm. I've got this massive market. People want to understand and learn all different types of technologies and accounting and different types of courses. So but how is Scott going to get to know his really good target demographic? Well, it's, there's a, there's a series of things. I mean, you could go, you could simply go to Google and type in um, target demographic worksheet or something like that. There's going to be a whole slew of ways for you to be able to condense who your target demographic is. Um, you know, specifically like what I'll do is when I'm working with a client, I'll actually sit down with them and say, there's, there's really like three questions I ask is age group. Um, you don't need to ask gender because when you're dealing with sellers and, and buyers, like they're, it, 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 there's a mix of them, right? There's not really mm-hmm. ever like specifically marked into a male or a female. Um, so I ask age group because that's a really big deal because you're, you're, you're pushing them into a group of people that, you know, somebody that's 60 plus is not going to be using Instagram. You know, somebody that's, you know, between the ages of 20 and 30, they're not listening to radio ads. They're not watching TV, live TV. So the commercials are not going to work with that target demographic. So, um, you know, understanding those things are, are important, but with, um, you know, for, for Scott, like the thing I would tell you is, um, you know, f- figure, figure those things out. But when you're marketing to them, keeping a pulse on it is going to be so important because if you're not keeping a pulse on, and that's, this is why I mentioned the data and, and I'm trying to like, I feel like I'm going in circles here, but this is like all these things connect. They all come full circle with each other. Because if you are studying your target demographic, meaning you're, you're, you know who they are, you know the age group, geographically, maybe you know where they hang out, digitally, you know where they hang out. Those are the things you gotta figure out. And there's not really an easy like fix for that because especially if you're in a very niched industry like myself, luckily I've been in this industry for a long time. So I know where my target demographic hangs out. You know, Most of my target demographic is hanging out on Facebook. They're not hanging out on LinkedIn which right. is not true for everybody. Um, but that's because I've communicated with them on a consistent basis. I've observed them. I've studied them. And this is where, this is where a lot of people don't do the homework um, is because they're not studying them. They're not trying to figure out those details about them. So there's all kinds of worksheets you could fill out. I, I always um, like suggesting the book called The One Page Marketing Plan. Um, Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic book when it comes to actually figuring out your target demographic. He has a really good worksheet that you can fill out to actually figure out who that target demographic is and kind of narrow it down to the the group of people you're working with. And then from there, it's on you. You have to go discover where are these people hanging out digitally, physically? What are their interests? What are their occupations, careers? Like, what are they actually doing with their time? Is my target demographic working a nine to five, getting home and then sitting down and watching you know, four hours of Netflix, going to bed, waking up at six o'clock in the morning and rinse and repeat doing it all over again. Those are things that you need to figure out, but it's on you to figure those things out. And there's a, you know, and Mark, there's a lot of that. That's kind of a, that's kind of a really hard question to ask just because there's no specific tactical strategies that work for everybody. It's simply, you got to do your homework. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I really pride myself on giving you the toughest questions I can. That was a tough question. Is is good yeah. though. It's good. That's yeah. a, but that's a question that people don't ask themselves when they're getting into their business. And and it's it's so extremely important to understand this. And like I said, going back, I feel like you know if people would read the one page marketing plan, um, that book. It's a very small book. It's it's more of a booklet, but it's it, it's a it's a really detailed book on like creating a marketing plan for yourself. But inside of that, you'll be able to understand how to find your target demographic. There's a specific chapter on that. And I think that's a really good starting point for people that aren't familiar with this territory. It's a good place for them to actually start and get into understanding that. And then, like I said, from there, it's your job to do your own homework and studying and figuring out all those details about them and confirming them. 
Right, right. So Scott Todd, um, he's already kind of given us a tip of the week, but we're going to have to ask him for another one. <laughs> so we are at that point in the podcast where, Josh, we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, another book, something else actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before you give us that tip, I just want to remind the listeners that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks going up the mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa, someone who's done it thousands of times. He's seen it all. We'll take you up that mountain quickly, safely, efficiently. Start building passive income with no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents. Pretty soon, once that passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, you're working because you want to, not because you have to. How do you get involved? Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Josh Kohler, what is your tip of the week? So Mark, how much time do I have on this tip of the week? You've Are we talking a minute? minute? Are we talking five minutes? <laughs> you, you got one minute and 27 seconds, go. Okay, go. Um, create relevant content to your target demographic. And like the reason, like I couldn't jump off the show if I didn't talk about content marketing and that's what we do. Um, we're pushing out about a thousand pieces of content a week on all platforms for the clients that we work with. But when it comes down to it, you need to look at content marketing, not just as, I, I feel like a lot of people boil it down to just social media, but it's so much more than that. Like what we're on right now, this podcast, this is, a, this is content marketing. Um, and what Mark's doing, what Scott's doing is collaborating with me through content. And so when this show goes out, I'm going to be sharing this with my audience and therefore they're dipping into my audience. But my audience is very similar and relevant to these guys' audiences. So when it comes down to it, creating contextual, relevant content to your target demographic is going to take you far above what you could possibly um, imagine when it comes to competing with your competitors because not everybody's doing content marketing. Uh, so that could be several mediums. That could be writing. That could be video. That could be podcasts. And again, this is why knowing your target demographic is so important because if your target demographic is not listening to podcasts, don't be putting out podcasts. And if they're not reading articles, don't be putting out articles. Um, and so these are, th these are things that you got to use with content marketing. So creating contextual content marketing to your target demographics that's relevant to them um, is important. And wrapping this up, um, content marketing, the purest definition that I can give you for content marketing is answering the questions that your target demographic or audience has about your industry, your services, or your product. And if you, by answering those questions, again, you have several mediums that you can play off of in order to answer those questions. And that's all it is. So if a target demographic for Mark has a question about um, investing in land, how do I get funding to invest in land? Then he needs to put out content, a video about his options on financing land. And that's content marketing as a whole. So that's my tip. I know I went over, but that's my tip. <laughs> no, no, I, I love it. I love it. Um... Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, I'm going to cheat this week, if that's okay. Of course. And here's what I'm going to do. I, okay, look. Do, do you hate money? Do I hate money? Yeah. I mean, I hate touching dirty dollar bills. Okay, but, but I, like, I love you know, the idea of, of the value. Of okay. Money. All right. All right. So here's my tip of the week. And look, if you hate money, then ignore this one. Okay. But if you like money and want more of it, then you sh then you need to go read the one page marketing plan that Josh mentioned. Like, seriously, you gotta go do that. Go do it. That is the weakest tip of the week. Listen, I told you- it was you great marketing. His, his messaging was so on point. That, do you hate I, money? You're one, asking a question and then giving yeah. the call to action. It's so great. Yeah. I love it. Look, one, I told you I was going to cheat. Number two, I framed it what I think is perfectly. Like, everybody's going to go get it now. So it's a great tip. <laughs> it's a great tip. It's you great. know what, though, guys? I'm not, I'm not one of those people that just wants to keep wanting up everybody. Josh had a great tip. Scott, you stole Josh's tip, but my <laughs> tip of the week actually can really move the needle in your life. Start blowing up your content marketing, learn your target audience and where and what is going to be the most receptive message 
for them, go to KohlerMedia.com. We have a link to it. KohlerMedia.com. Um, my good buddy, Mike Hambright, has been using, I'm actually using, working with Josh for years. If you've seen Mike's um, videos, they are so slick, so professional. Um, and every time I talk to him, I am just, you know, like in a shame spiral because his stuff looks so much better than mine. <laughs> and now I know what his secret is. So you know who he's dealing me. with. <laughs> I know what you he's know, dealing with. You know he's dealing with. <laughs> yeah, he's been cheating. He's no creative genius. No, he's not. No, not no. even. Not yeah, close. this whole time <laughs> I've been deluded. Okay, so um, KohlerMedia.com is my tip of the week. I want to thank the listeners and just remind you guys, the only way, the only way we're going to get a quality of guests like a Josh Kohler from Kohler Media is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at the at the landgeek.com. We are going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. So please do it. All right, Josh Kohler, are we good? Yes, thank you so much for having me on. This was fun. Awesome. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. <laughs> All okay. right. Okay, not bad. Thanks, everybody.